Man, these two weeks have been pretty exciting for a lot of different geeks out there. This has probably been one of the biggest viral events when it comes to technology, discoveries, or just everyone online trying to collaborate in order to figure out what's actually happening here. Or technically, what's happening here. Is this really some kind of a magical room temperature superconductor? Or is this something entirely different? And we've all been excited for no reason whatsoever. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, so let's talk about this once again, do another update, discuss some of the most recent videos and discoveries, and possibly, maybe, find some kind of a conclusion here once and for all. But first let's start with the most recent video that was actually released by the original scientist behind the paper that claimed that this was a superconductor. Now before I even watched the video, when I heard they released a new one, I expected something really good. Something finally showing us what's known as magnetic locking, or basically when you have a superconductor directly locked to some kind of a magnet in a very specific position, no matter what orientation it has, or maybe showing us something else somewhat impressive, potentially proving their point. Yeah, we didn't get that. Instead we got more fingers, pushing objects, trying to prove that this is some kind of a superconductivity involving what's known as the Meissner effect, the levitation based on superconductivity. I'm sorry, but definitely not impressed. As many scientists stated before, this seems to be either some kind of a diamagnetism or potentially even ferromagnetism. Nothing superconductive about this either. So unfortunately, the original authors still did not provide any additional explanations or any additional evidence. But we do have so many different laboratories studying this, trying to figure it out, with many of them already releasing a lot of data and a lot of videos. Now the thing is, some of the most viral videos that I'm going to show you right now, despite being super exciting and actually groundbreaking, turn out to be, uh, okay, let me not spoil it yet. Let me show you the video first. And here's the first one, potentially showing us that lock-in mechanism we've all been waiting for. Now this is kind of exciting. Super exciting, actually. And here's another one from another university, once again in China, showing us potential levitation above the magnet, once again implying that maybe this is a superconductor. Which obviously created a lot of buzz, huge amounts of views on a lot of those Chinese platforms, and everyone was talking about this once again. But here's the thing though. The first video was unverified from an unknown user, the second one was also from someone that we didn't know. And within just a few days, it was first proven to be fake, and later on admitted by the authors to be fake, basically just for the cloud, for the views. With one of the users eventually posting this somewhat cheesy apology, claiming that he didn't realize it's going to create so many negative comments and so much negative response from everyone around him. So yeah, we raise our hopes for nothing. None of this is real. And in the last 10 days or so, the entire thing just became a big meme. It descended into some kind of a madness where people started making a lot of assumptions that were completely untrue, more claims, more unusual videos, more unusual propositions, and even explanations that made no sense whatsoever. For example, for some reason, quite a few Chinese universities and Chinese researchers claim to have recreated the sample very similar to the one in the original paper, and it seemed to exhibit superconductivity properties. With one proposition and explanation being that maybe this is just an unconventional superconductor, which is an actual scientific concept. And we know that things like, for example, graphene, that contains only carbon, exhibit certain unconventional superconductivity properties. Properties that do not seem to follow the conventional theories that explain regular superconductivity. And so several of these papers were basically trying to make this point. Here the electrons somehow were able to connect to one another, creating a collective state that behaves as a single electron that can move without impedance, without any resistance. But there's an obvious problem here. It's a huge far-fetched assumption that has absolutely no theoretical basis based on any of the samples from these papers. It's literally like saying, yeah, it's actually levitating because of… magic? So far, the theoretical explanation made no sense. Likewise, the original publication lacked important types of diagrams that you'd expect from a paper on superconductivity, with the diagrams that were included not actually showing us anything important and not showing evidence for superconductivity either. Intriguingly, as I mentioned in the last video, Korea has recently established a committee trying to verify these results, mostly because they're really worried that this is going to create a major blunder for the future of science in Korea. They asked the authors for the sample so they can verify the original claims. But this request was rejected because the authors are waiting for an official publication and will only give the samples out once the paper is published in a peer-reviewed scientific magazine. But if they don't want to provide the sample to anyone, 
how is anyone going to know if it's real? And so, so far, they haven't been able to provide any definitive evidence for anything. For example, resistance. This is a graph from their own paper, and in a superconductor, it would show us zero resistance at a claimed temperature. But here, it doesn't seem to be zero. It might be close to zero, but definitely not zero. That already makes it a non-superconductor. In a separate graph, they tried to prove this by using voltage, and once again, here, it's supposed to be zero. It seems to be close to zero, but it's not exactly zero. That is not a superconductor. And so the assumption here is that this is maybe some kind of a material that seems to change properties in certain conditions, such as maybe becoming a good conductor when reaching certain temperatures. Not a superconductor, but it might acquire low resistance. But intriguingly, in the graph that they used, even the voltage here was kind of weird. For some reason, they relied on extremely small currents of about 2 to 3 millivolts, not larger currents that you'd expect, in order to test superconductivity. And to anyone in material sciences or anyone studying superconductors, all of this together just looks super fishy. And so the only way to prove any of this is to obviously have someone else recreate this and then have someone else conduct completely independent tests of everything claimed in a paper. And as of making of this video, we actually do have several major universities finally creating their own samples, conducting their own analysis, and even scanning all of this using x-rays in order to find out what the structure of the material is. And here I actually wanted to divide this video into two parts. One is based on what happened on x.com, with one person basically becoming a kind of a unsung hero, because he managed to create everything by himself, sending many samples to the lab where they were then tested. And the separate part is going to be in regards to bigger universities with independent teams. Let's start with the eggs. This wonderful person, Andrew McCallop, basically became the face of independent research. You can actually read a lot of his posts in the description below, but in essence he describes the procedure he used to create these samples with extreme detail and really good images, eventually producing several samples, which he then was able to test in order to find out if any of them were a superconductor. Just as described in the original paper, he basically had to bake everything using specific minerals that had to be purchased online. And ironically, because of this unusual craze where everybody was trying to recreate the samples, at some point it became extremely difficult to source certain materials. For example, something that's often used to synthesize morphine, red phosphorus, became almost impossible to get. This is one of the ingredients. But he eventually created several samples, and at least one exhibited unusual properties that seemed to be maybe levitation? Sort of? Kind of? That's the sample that was then sent to University of South Carolina for additional testing. Interestingly, this was actually one of the few samples that was levitating, with other ones not doing much. And well, just to remind you, the original prediction for why things were levitating involved an explanation where some of the lead atoms were replaced by copper, reducing the volume and inducing certain superconductivity effects. This was due to the emergence of what's known as the Fermi bands, which would then lead to the Meissner effect or the levitation observed. But what do the tests show? None of that. Nothing like that was reported at all. It did exhibit magnetic levitation, but it was for completely different reasons. It was because of metallic impurities, specifically iron. It was basically contaminated with iron, which made it levitate just like iron usually does. And so in his last post, Andrew goes through these conclusions, to some extent, maybe explaining what was happening here from the beginning. With all this being a result of a tiny fraction of iron atoms that seem to be present in certain samples. And here, just one microgram of iron can easily create these effects, even in a larger sample. In terms of that resistance drop, though, he actually points out that there's an explanation in a different Chinese paper from Chinese Academy of Sciences that doesn't observe superconductivity, but proposes that resistance reduction is because of the phase change of copper sulfide. In other words, maybe there is still something exciting going on here, just not superconductivity. And so here, iron might explain levitation, copper sulfide might explain why we suddenly see low resistance, but none of this shows us zero resistance or Meissner effect. But these are not the only such discoveries. We actually had several major releases from major universities, once again showing us that nothing superconductive was going on anywhere. The most recent one is from Princeton University, discovering no superconductivity either. Although in this case, they did suggest that they couldn't actually get the copper to replace lead in those locations. Although their explanation is that it might not even be possible. Replacing lead with copper, according to them, seems to be not feasible based on the energy calculations. Then, a couple of days ago, 
we actually had the biggest result from China as well, technically from their biggest university, Peking University. By recreating the same samples, they found no special conductivity properties anywhere. And were actually the first to propose the most likely explanation. Ferromagnetic materials like iron basically causing repulsion, turning this into a kind of a very ineffective magnet. And the explanation from Peking University is practically the same as the explanation from Andrew McCallop and the university he sent the samples to. And so this seems to be the most likely explanation, contamination of iron. And both teams were also able to confirm everything using X-ray scanning, suggesting that the atoms were in the right place as originally described in the first paper. Similar negative results from Shanghai University, University of Manchester, and several other major universities including Max Planck Institute, National University of Taiwan, and really a bunch of other papers and a lot of other universities, the studies from which you can find in the description below. With a lot of different scientists also mentioning that the recipe from the paper, from the original paper, does not seem to work at all. Many of them had to come up with their own ideas and their own techniques in order to recreate the three-dimensional lattice the original scientists were claiming was responsible for superconductivity. And so LK99, also known as the modified lead appetite, does not seem to be anything particularly special, at least for now. And so, so far, no evidence has been provided for anything other than those few fake videos I showed you in the beginning. And so even though these couple of weeks now have been super exciting and led to a huge interest in science and of course superconductivity, physically none of this is going to be changing the world anytime soon. Mostly because it doesn't seem to work. But ironically, overshadowed by all of this hype and all of this excitement, there have been a couple of papers, somewhat exciting physics papers, that do discuss new opportunities for superconductors that we might not expect just yet. I'm not going to be discussing them in detail in this video, but let me give you a kind of a brief breakdown. The first study you can find in the description discusses exotic types of superconductivity that in theory could actually create superconductivity out of materials we never expected, implying that there are several different ways superconductivity can be achieved even in materials we don't usually expect to be conductive at all. Although here they don't really provide exact examples, they only provide a theoretical framework. And in a more recent study, Scientists studying a very specific superconductor discovered a concept that was predicted something like seven decades ago. It's known as the Pines Demon, representing a type of a particles known as plasmon, which is basically a bunch of waves rippling through electrons similar to waves we find on the water. And the reason this is exciting is because these types of unusual quantum particles have actually been predicted to be really important for superconductivity. And so figuring out exactly how this forms may actually take us closer to that ultimate goal that scientists were trying to achieve here. Room temperature superconductor. Although in this case it would be achieved through theory first, and by then using specific theories, the scientists would try to recreate the material from scratch. But when it comes to the saga of LK99, at least for now I think we're kind of finished. We might have a few more announcements from even bigger labs, most likely discovering nothing once again, but unless there is some kind of a groundbreaking discovery in the next couple of weeks, I think for now I'm just going to call it quits on this. I don't think anything important was discovered here, I don't think it's a superconductor or even an important material, and honestly it doesn't really seem that way from any papers I've read so far. Or maybe I'm wrong, and that means I'm going to have to make a correction video sometime in the future. Subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.